Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar explaining how to integrate your outcomes with best notes. My name is Nicole, and my job for our webinar today is to get any questions answered during our question and answer portion. If you do have a question, please type it into the Q&A module located at the bottom of the webinar screen on this black meeting bar. This webinar is being recorded, and the recorded version will be sent out in an email. I would like to introduce our host for the webinar, Kristen Frankham. Kristen has worked at Best Notes for over nine years and has been the Director of Outcome Tools for the past three years. Kristen is the point of contact for setting up Best Notes customers with their Outcome Tools account and providing training. Take it away, Kristen. Thank you, Nicole. And thank you all for joining our webinar today. We're excited to share this topic with you and hope that it will be helpful for your organizations and for anything that you're working on with measuring outcomes. We want to cover a few topics today, specifically about what is outcome tools and how do best notes and outcome tools work together. And then also we'll go through a process of how you can start measuring your outcomes at your organization or hopefully maybe address some of you who are measuring your outcomes. If you're having trouble, see if we can help you to move forward and give you some ideas of what will help you in the future. So the history of outcome tools, it has been around since 2010. It was developed to meet the needs of the National Association of Therapeutic Schools and Programs. That association, in conjunction with the Outdoor Behavioral Health Council, wanted to answer the question of, is wilderness therapy effective, and how do we show that we're being effective? And so they came up with a process using OQ measures tools and different series of time frames to be able to find that information out with their clients. With that, they were able to gather data and reports and present it to insurance billing companies so that they can now get reimbursed with a revenue code. So you'll see that revenue code listed right there on the slide. And that's a little bit of the power that outcomes can do is you can prove to your payers the effectiveness of the treatment that you're providing. So what is Outcome Tools? It's a program that's integrated with Best Notes that can be used to send and receive outcome surveys to clients um, to help provide high quality care, track your client progress, and measure treatment effectiveness. And so you can do that with uh, inputting instruments into your outcome tools and measuring them. So why should you measure your outcome tools? Research has shown that clients get better faster when they know their outcomes and can see improvement over time. I've had some companies share that when they have shared outcomes with their clients, their clients come in asking, what are my OQ measures results from my last time that I took the instrument? And they want to see, are they improving or are in, are things in their life that are happening affecting their outcome score? And so it's really exciting when your clients get invested into the data as well as your organization when you as an organization team come together and start looking at that together. You start asking questions and figuring out where is some improvement that can happen within our organization. Another reason is regulatory bodies are requiring measurement-based care. Uh, CARF has always required to, uh, measurement for outcomes. They're not as specific as the Joint Commission. The Joint Commission in 2018 started a standard or released a standard that they want all organizations that are Joint Commission accredited to measure their outcomes at regular intervals early on in treatment so that they can inform their care treatment and services that they're providing with their clients. We also know that in the healthcare world that things are changing. So changes in payer reimbursement are moving more from a fee for service to a fee for outcomes. So you may have heard the term value-based care, which we'll mention a little bit about that through the presentation. We won't go into depth, but it is requiring companies to show that the information or the outcomes that they're providing and the services that they're providing are having an impact on their clients. And then this allows you, when you're measuring outcomes, it allows you to address specific problems, real life problems, 
early in treatment, if you're looking at a client, having them take a tool and measuring it across different intervals of time, you can see how the client is progressing through treatment. And one of maybe one of the most important things is that you can highlight the good your organization is already doing. You can use the data that you're gathering in your marketing with your potential clients as well as on your websites and share how your clients do while they're in treatment with you, depending on what tool you choose and how you are presenting that information. Another reason why you should measure is that, wait, I mentioned value-based care. This is a graphic that will be on our new Outcome Tools website, and it just shows you that when you collect data and you verify those results, making sure that you have data integrity, you can demonstrate the impact of a service or intervention, which is your outcomes. And when you can do that, then that can show your client the value that you're providing to them, as well as to your payers, maybe most importantly to your payers, so that you can show you are being effective in how you're presenting your treatment. Feedback-informed treatment is really important. The use of outcome data routinely may facilitate reflective clinical practice, a model of decision-making which leads to a higher quality of clinical care than automated problem solving. And so if you look at this, it shows you that when you're gathering data, you can start asking questions and those questions can be informed with information that you've gathered. And then your team can make an informed decision, your clinical team can, you as a clinician will have data to back up the decisions that you're making with your clients. Um, And it just kind of unifies your entire organization together so that you have supported information when you're making your decisions. So I just want to open it up. Nicole, do we have any questions at this time? We do. Caitlin asked, you mentioned a wilderness revenue code. Is that something insurance companies are accepting now? From what I understand, yes, I haven't talked to anybody specific who said I've input this code, but it is a code that they can bill for specifically to their payers. What I want to do now is we're going to jump into an actual case scenario. So we'll take you through a clinician named Kristen and a client named Heather. I'm going to walk through how they use feedback-informed treatment throughout the entire process. Um, It may not be to the detail that you're used to, but it'll show you Uh, an idea of how you can integrate this into your organization if you're not already doing that. And feel free to ask questions about the process. We can provide a specific training just for your organization and talk through some of these. The first question a lot of companies ask me is, how do I begin? What do I do? As an organization, you'll need to decide what data you want to know. In this scenario, we want to know the clinician, Kristen, would like to know the severity of depression that her clients have and what she can do, what does she need to do when she finds out using a tool, what steps does she need to take with that client. You'll need to choose an instrument. That's probably one of the biggest questions that I get from companies is what, how do I know what instrument to choose? We did a webinar back at the beginning of the year that goes through a lot of questions that your company should ask before you choose your instrument. You may have a, a group of instruments that will meet your needs. You may have one instrument that's going to give you all the information that you need. But you should get curious with your team to say, what do we want to know? And then find a tool that helps you to get that information. So in this case, we're going to choose the PHQ-9 because it measures severity of depression. And uh, after you choose a tool, then you decide how often you want that tool to be delivered. Some tools have limits on how often you can deliver. You can't deliver it more than once a month or some of them are, it just depends on the tool. Every tool will, the tool you choose will kind of tell you how often you should deliver. Um, And then you need to get signed up with Outcome Tools. Most of you are Best Notes users, and if you have a Best Notes account, 
Outcome Tools is included with your Best Note subscription if you're on our newest pricing structure. If you're not sure if you're on our newest pricing structure, send me an email and we will talk through that. And then you need to train your staff on how to administer the particular tool or tools that you've chosen and how to interpret those results. And then decide who in your organization is going to oversee that data. So uh, the most successful programs that I've seen have designated a research coordinator, have hired somebody to be their research coordinator to make sure that they're getting their results back in a timely manner from their clients or and also that um, somebody is looking at the data and bringing it to the forefront for whoever needs to whether it's your executive team or your clinical team and then after you get that data you need to document those results in your clinical documentation like your treatment plans or your progress notes This is really important for accreditation. They want to see that you are gathering the data, but also once you gather it, that you take that and implement it into your treatment process with your clients. And so we'll show you how that works here in just a minute. So choosing an instrument. I have a lot of companies who come to me and say, hey, I want to build a tool on my own. We already have this, which is great. It's great that you're thinking about what you want to measure and how you want to measure. But for accreditation purposes, it's best to use a valid and reliable tool. And actually the Joint Commission requires that you use one. That way you can compare populations against each other. Um, Usually a valid and reliable tool has benchmarking so that you can show how your clients stack up against other clients. And then also, it needs to be sensitive to clinically significant change. That means that it shows you whether a client is getting better or worse. And then you should be able to use it for repeated use if you're using it for progress monitoring or, or feedback-informed treatment. You don't want to use an instrument that's a one-time tool. For example, we have you may be familiar with the tool, the Adverse Childhood Experience. That is one that can only be given once, and so it couldn't be used for feedback-informed treatment over time. It needs to include a clinical cutoff so that you can show your client and say, look, you're in the clinical range here, and these are the things that we need to do to help you in your treatment, and here's some objectives that we'll work on to move you forward. And then you can choose between open source versus licensed. There are some really great open source tools. We can just turn those on for you and they're free to use. And then there are also some very well-known licensed tools that are good for you to use that will get you some information that you need. So I'm going to show you, uh, we have a list on our website. I've put some of them here for you to review just so you can get an idea of some of the instruments you could use. On the public domain, those are your open source tools that are available freely for anybody. We do have some tools that are copyrighted, but the copyright holder does not charge for them, and so you're able to use those as well. And then we have some that require you to request permission for. And so you have to submit to the copyright holder and they'll usually send a letter back and you just send us a copy of that letter. There may be a cost associated depending on what tool you choose. And then the paid license agreement ones, mostly we work with OQ measures on those. We do also have a CARF package. Uh, And on our website, uh, it talks about the pricing of what those are. Okay, once you choose your tool, then you need to define your data collection schedule. So in the case with Heather and Kristen, the clinician, we are going to deliver the PHQ-9 on admin and every 30 days until discharge. Within outcome tools, we can set those rules for you and set a series that will allow you to calculate off of the admit date or the discharge date. So it will take the guesswork out for your clinicians to know when is the next survey due. It will actually just create the survey and put it in the client record. Depending on your delivery method that you choose to deliver, it will automatically send it out. But 
the majority of them will need to be initiated by your clinician to have the client take the survey. So you add the client from best notes to outcome tools. When you have outcome tools turned on, you'll have an outcome tools tab in your best notes. This will say the client doesn't exist in outcome tools and you'll click that add client button. Once you add that client, so we've added Heather to outcome tools and it's pulled her client demographic information. So we can see her admit date was in June on June 7th and then she is going to discharge in January. And you'll know the data that's coming out of Best Notes into Outcome Tools by clicking that card icon to the left of her name. Anything with a yellow lock is pulling in from Best Notes into Outcome Tools. This makes it nice so that if her email address changes or if she her discharge date needs to change, it will be updated in Best Notes, but also in Outcome Tools, and so you keep your data integrity there within the system because it's being entered in one time. So you can also assign your surveys automatically with the series. So we've decided to assign the PHQ-9 for Heather to take every 30 days. You'll do that by clicking the lightning bolt. And we have the ability to choose the client admit series or the discharge series. So when you see your client admit series will calculate off of the admit date. So every 30 days after her admit date, it'll assign a PHQ-9. And then the discharge series, I think I just put it as discharge and then six months post-discharge and a year post-discharge. And so you can choose the delivery method, uh, how you want her to take it and you can change that per survey as needed, but it will default to having all surveys delivered with the delivery method you choose on this screen. So you can see right here, now Heather has the PHQ-9. It's getting delivered every 30 days since she admitted into the, the program. And they're assigned to her automatically. You'll see, you know that it's coming from the client admit series or the discharge series listed in that column. And then your instances let you know uh, what time frame that she took that survey. So A0 is an admit, A30 is 30 days after admit. And then on discharge, D0 is discharge, D180 is 180 days after discharge. And so it just lets you know that if you wanted to compare Heather across your other clients who have taken the PHQ-9 on admit, that A0 lets you know that that's the instance that those other clients have taken that as well. If you aren't using a series, you can also manually assign questionnaires. There are some surveys that are more on-demand surveys or as needed, and so you can assign those from the questionnaires tab by clicking on the questionnaire drop-down, assigning a time frame, and then assigning a delivery method, and then you hit the lightning bolt. So I've talked a little bit about delivery methods. Delivery methods are how the client will take those surveys. If your client's in your office, a good option for you is to have them take it on, ki on a kiosk iPad or a tablet or a dedicated computer. It doesn't have to be an iPad. It can be anything, any dedicated device that you've put for this. And it allows you to have the client input a PIN number and access the surveys that you have open for them. This is really nice because if you have them in your office, you can make sure that they take those surveys in a timely manner while you have them right there in front of you. You do have also the ability to send a web link. This is if you're gonna write a personalized email to the client and then you're gonna grab a web link out of Outcome Tools and copy it into your email. An email delivery method, this is the automated option. So if you are assigning a series and you assign an email delivery, those surveys actually get delivered automatically on the day that the survey becomes active. And the client also receives two reminders while that survey is open. And this is really nice for busy clinicians who don't have time to remember, did I send a reminder? When did I send it? Takes the guesswork out of when does that need to go out to the client. By staff from paper is the old way of doing 
survey delivery where you ha print out the survey, have the client take the survey, and then input the results after the client leaves. We encourage you not to do this mostly because then you have to print off paper and then you also have to then decide whether you're going to put it in a chart or shred shred the results. So to go electronic, I would choose one of the first three if possible. And then the by staff in-person interview and phone interview, there may be surveys that require like a structured interview and require the clinician to take this Ha to input those results, like a Columbia Suicide Severity Rating Scale. That one is a structured interview and needs a clinician's input on that survey, and so the client can actually self-report by writing in their own answers. You have to write in those answers on, on that particular survey. So once you have delivered the survey to the client, the client will submit the survey, survey if you're doing it on the kiosk or through email, and those results come into outcome tools after they hit submit. There's nothing you have to do, they just hit submit and it now becomes a completed survey in their record. So Heather took the PHQ-9 on her A0 instance, so this is her baseline score for her PHQ-9, and it gives us a consideration of major depressive disorder with a severity of severe, and sh her score is 20. So you ask the question, what does a 20 on a PHQ-9 mean? So most surveys will have a scoring criteria. Here is the PHQ-9 scoring criteria. It lets you know the ranges of severity and what is the proposed treatment action. So for a score of 20 um, and a severe de severity, it is proposed that you, for immediate initiation of pharmacotherapy, and if severe impairment or poor response to therapy, expedited referral to a mental health specialist or psychotherapy and or collaborative management. So if your organization doesn't provide those services, then you may need to refer the client out. If they do, then you now have uh, some steps that you can take with that client to m help her to cope with her depression, maybe give her some skills, maybe work with her on, on what she wants to do to improve her situation. We had the client take surveys from A0 to A180. So for the last six months, she's been taking surveys. And this is an individual client progress chart that will start generating as you have the client take surveys on regular intervals. This is really nice for joint commission. So you could show them this and say, here's why we did X, Y, and Z on our treatment plan with Heather. Uh, because of her scores as her scores go up. So this can make you ask a question, maybe between A60 and A90, what happened here? If you were a residential program, maybe she had a home visit that she went home for and something happened or she had some kind of traumatic event happened during that time and it could spark a discussion so you can find out a little bit more information. This also shows you that over time, Heather is improving. So she came in with a very high severity and has progressively gotten better over time. And the other nice thing is, is if you do measure post-discharge, you can see at discharge, she was in a normal range and has maintained that over the last year post-discharge. So it does help you as an organization to quickly see, at least for this client, that whatever treatment you provided has helped the client and has maintained over time. And so that's a pretty powerful thing to be able to use within your marketing or with your clients to say, hey, you, you've made some improvement here and I can show you just even based off of one test you've taken every, every 30 days while you've been here. Once the client takes the survey, that data also comes back into Best Notes as a copy in their Outcome Tools tab. So your clinical team could 
instead of having to jump into outcome tools for that client, they can actually just go right to the client record on best notes and see the surveys they've taken and what their scores are. And that PHQ-9 right here, these are active links and so they can open up each individual survey. You can also pull that up side by side with your documentation that you're doing and so you can put in the scores into your treatment planning or your progress notes while you're working with the client. One of the newest features that we have in Outcome Tools is that you can also sign and append your notes. So the Outcome Tool, completed Outcome Tool, creates a, a copy in the client activity log. So you can open up the record just like you would a progress note or a treatment plan and have the clinician uh, sign the document by adding Kristen as a signer. Then Kristen could also append that note if she wanted to make a note on this particular one. So this is our D360. So this is a year post-discharge. This client has minimal severity with a score of two. And we've added Kristen as a signer. She will hit the sign entry button right here. And then at the bottom, it'll say uh, appended by Kristen on this day and time reviewed results with the client and showed that progress over the last six months has been maintained as she's followed the goals set and stayed in a non-clinical level for depression. And then um, this is great also for joint commission to show them we are reviewing our results with our clients and here is the clinician who reviewed the results and what their notes are. Instead of an individual progress chart, we do have the ability to compare your clients across each other as well. So you can see overall client progress. And right here, this average scores report just shows you on A0, the average score of the 21 clients who have taken, our, taken the PHQ-9 is 15. So our clients come in with a pretty high level of depression. Um, and then over time, you can see there is a downward trend, maybe at A90 and A120 it goes up. This is not a big enough sample size to make any organization decisions on, but it does show you that. So Heather's results are all included within these, and you may have a few other clients that are included with these results. This would be a report that you could maybe use a year or two down the road after you've been gathering outcomes with your clients over a period of time. And some surveys may provide even better information than just a PHQ-9. You may have a survey that you like that will provide you even better information uh, over time as you look at this progress chart, the overall client progress chart. So now that you've gathered the data, what do you do with that data? You want to make sure that you document in your clinical documentation how that data was used to inform your care, treatment, and services. And so we saw a little bit of that on the appended note. I'll show you that here in a second on a progress note. You'll also want to analyze the data and make organization goals for improvement. And so when you're looking at your overall client progress chart, it should be something that your executive team comes together looks at together, discusses on a regular basis. It's not maybe something that you do every single time you, like maybe monthly you have a outcomes meeting, or maybe you say every six months we're going to look at our results and, and see is there anything that we need to improve on based off of the results and the feedback that we're getting from our clients. And then your data gathering and data governments should become part of your organizational culture. So some of the best programs that, I, that we work with that are successful in measuring their outcomes and using their outcomes have buy-in from their executive director, from the program owner uh, that asks regularly how are our clients doing and how are our outcome scores. And they look at them with with their teams and discuss how to maybe improve their process and over time that process evolves and you get better and better at gathering and analyzing the data that you're looking at. So 
what does it look like to document in best notes? So we've got this master treatment plan right here with Heather, and we have her major depressive disorder uh, treatment plan worksheet. Um, and she's added in goals, objectives, and interventions. And then when we have a progress note, we can type in uh, the information that we got from the PHQ-9. So Heather scored a 20 on her baseline PHQ-9 with consideration of severe major depressive disorder. We will work with her to establish if we need to refer out to a higher level of care or work on objectives to stabilize her depression symptoms. And so something s as simple as that to show that you provided the PHQ-9, had her self-report, and that you're taking that score and using it within your discussion with her or within just your progress notes that you're writing after the treatment that you're giving. So I just want to reiterate the what we talked about earlier, that when you gather your data, you start asking questions, you then have information that can be provided so that you can make informed clinical decisions within your organization and then also with your individual clients that you're treating. And so we hope you'll remember that as you're trying to integrate your outcomes. One of the most important things is that you want to make informed decisions, not just based on a clinician's feelings, but based off of this is what the client is reporting and you're listening to how the client is feeling and what they're saying about how things are going for them on on the tools that you're providing them. So we want to open it up for any questions. We hope that that was helpful. Uh, this is actually kind of a demo of outcome tools and uh, outcome tools demos take about 30 minutes. So this is going to be a, a shorter webinar for you, um, but just wanted to open up here for a few questions and see uh, if we can answer anybody's questions. Thanks, Kristen. I got a couple of questions here. Uh, first one from Sue Ellen. For instruments which do not use scores, is there a way to view responses to individual questions across clients? Outcome Tools is data gathering, so we do have the ability to export your responses into a CSV file. So yes, you can look at each individual question and each response. And so yeah, there is value in quantitative versus qualitative data. So it's important to decide um, for your accreditation purposes, they want you to use a tool that has a score um, for you to show progress over time with a score. Um, but for your internal organization, it is great to get open-ended questions to get that information back. So yes, we have the export tab so you can look at that data from individual questions, but then you also can pull up each individual survey on a client's best notes record or within outcome tools. Thank you. Uh, Carrie asked, can we use a tool that is not on the list or tools that don't have scores? For example, the outcome would be understanding their diabetes better or getting a medical home. If there is a tool that you like and use outside of what we have on our list, we are always adding instruments and we, we want people to have the instrument that they uh, that they want to use. So there are some that are copyrighted and those copyright holders don't allow you to use them outside of the system that they already have built. So it really depends on the tool. If you have one you want me to look at with you, we can talk to the copyright holder and find out what their rules are behind it. Um, if it is an open source one, we can build it in Outcome Tools. Um, there is a cost to build those within Outcome Tools. It's $150 as a base cost, um, depending on the complexity of the scoring and the detail, but the majority of instruments fall into the $150 range for you. So um, yes, you can also use open-ended questions, and uh, they just won't be plotted on a chart. There's no way to plot those on a chart, and so it's just individual feedback for you for that particular client. Tucker asked, for the web link delivery method, can a client complete the survey on a mobile device? Yes, they can. So if they've got their email connected on their cell phone and they pull that up, um, all our surveys are built to be mobile friendly, and so they're built really um, 
very vertical and so it look they look great on phones and they can take them on their cell phone yes Charles asked how is the iPad utilized in taking tests as we cannot get into best notes with with an iPad Outcome Tools is a module outside of Best Notes, and it, it is web-based. So um, if your organization didn't use Best Notes, you could use Outcome Tools separately because it's a web page. So um, you can access Outcome Tools on an iPad. The kiosk iPad is just a web link for them. So yes, you can use it on an iPad, um, and all the surveys can be pulled up, and the client can use their finger. It's touchscreen compatible to give their responses to them. Harlan asks, given that you are using various instruments to obtain outcomes, is there a current report and outcome tools to see the cumulative results and determine if overall your counseling is effective? If you're talking about comparing tools across tools, we don't have a way to pull two instruments together. Um, it's all very individualized per tool. And so um, that's where the export feature becomes helpful for you is you can export that data and then do whatever data analysis you need. Um, I have a lot of companies that uh, they don't have somebody in-house that is a data analysis expert or they don't feel comfortable with that. And so they've hired people outside that will take their data and show them visually with the with their information. Um, and so if you're interested in that or if you wanted to do something like that, I can connect you with a third party that can help you do that data analysis. Thank you all for attending. Um, if you do have any other questions, uh, here my email is here, team at bestnotes.com. You're always welcome to call us, and um, if you're ready to get started with Outcome Tools, you can go ahead and send me an email, and I'll set up a demo time to get you started. We can talk through what your organization needs specifically. Um, we also are always doing more webinars. We've done three, three this year. This is our third one this year, um, and they're great information to help you understand about how to choose an instrument, what is progress monitoring and how does it look like? And then this one is just how do I do it with best notes and outcome tools together. If you have any other topics or things that you want to know more information about, also let me know and any feedback. We, we appreciate that and it helps us to provide better what information you all want to know. So thank you again and hope you have a wonderful day.